Thanks to you both. Uh, Lizanne, just jumping off from Steve there, in terms of the macro implications that you see uh, and what they are, how long they'll last from, uh, obviously, what's going on in Ukraine, uh, what are they? Well, I think we're clearly still uh, at headline risk levels for the equity market on an intraday basis, on a pre-open basis. I think the, the settling in relative to where we were when futures opened last night maybe is because negotiations are happening and there's some hope that there's some sort of off-ramp here, but nobody has uh, any sense of that. In terms of, of Fed policy, which has been the more important macro medium-term driver, uh, you know, there is a bit of chatter about whether maybe they don't do anything at the, the March meeting. I, I have very little risk that they do 50 basis points. But these days, both in terms of the Russia-Ukraine situation and data as it's coming in and perceptions thereof, two weeks is, is still a bit of a lifetime. So I think because the Fed has said they will be data dependent, they're focused on financial system stability more so than just financial market volatility. Um, I think it's too soon to judge uh, what the Fed is going to do on March 16th, but that's obviously the next big date that we know of. Of course. Uh, Ernesto, I think you're talking about, listen, regardless of what happens on the ground, uh, we are in what may be considered a new Cold War. And so my question is, what are the implications if, in fact, that is the case? Well, there's clearly uh, some long-term implications. The short term is very hard to predict. But the long-term implications are, are, are several. One, for example, is uh, increased defense spending by Europe and the U.S. just to uh, protect what we currently have uh, in NATO. And uh, because defense has uh, been underinvested, especially by Europe, for, for quite a while. Another is uh, energy prices will stay stronger for longer. That's, that's pretty clear. Uh, uh, and, and so that may not be a very long-term effect, but that's clearly now the case. Um, financial friction and, uh, and cost of goods sold, as all commodity prices seem to have gone higher, will pervade in the system. So that will create some earnings difficulties. But it's, of course, a, a company by company situation. And our analysts at Columbia Third Needle are busily uh, trying to um, um, quantify the aspects, uh, all the aspects of, of this transmission of rising costs into their stocks. And, and we take that into account. We're building our portfolios. So, uh, so th those are just some examples. Another one, for example, is uh, more investment in renewables and perhaps some acceleration of reopening nuclear plants in Europe as Europe tries to reduce their dependency on uh, fossil fuels from, from Russia.